Amen. Let me get started. Let me get started. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 and 11. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10 and 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Thank you so much. Help me say, be strong. Say it again, be strong. Now it is actually improper to begin in a message in the middle of a conversation. It is like passing a door and you hear a statement while passing and you draw a conclusion upon the statement. What you would normally have to do then is use your imagination because you don't have proper information. But because the Bible is deep, yet it is shallow, it is deep enough for scholars to dive in and never reach the bottom. And yet it is shallow enough for babies to swim in and never drown. And because of that, and because of the time has been allotted to me, allow me to dive into this passage in the middle of a conversation. He opened this verse by using the word finally. And of course, it sounds like a church word because we wait every Sunday to hear the word finally. We have gone through praise and worship and announcement, giving, and a long sermon. We wait to hear somebody say, finally. You would think that is what this passage meant because of the geographical location of the text. But it is this Greek word, loipon. The word loipon for finally does not mean that it is over but that he saved the best for last. I had some problems with that because of what Paul had covered in the previous chapters. Because in Ephesians chapter one, he opened dealing with this matter of election. Now election has baffled the mind of scholars. Scholars even today, they're in, they're in biblical laboratory and schools trying to figure out what the word election means. Here is how election work. It worked kind of like this. That screen as you exit the door, there will be some writing above the door that says, whosoever will, let him come. It looked like I'm coming by invitation, that it was my choice, it was my decision. But once I get through the door and look above the door from the other side, the writing says, for whom he did foreknow. Then he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. On this side, it looked like it is my choice, it's my invitation. But on the other side, I see it was a setup that God had me in mind before the foundation of the world. Because Ephesians 1 and 4 say, according to whom he has chosen. The word chosen is an arrogant admit that God acted alone. Without a Supreme Court, without a board of directors, he made the choice. It is not only an arrogant, but in mill voice, which means he acted by himself, but for himself. Which means you was chosen by God, but chosen for God. But then he says, he tell us when the election took place in Ephesians 1, 4, he said it was before the foundation of the world. <laughs> it means that I'm not an afterthought. It means that I didn't just happen to show up after mom and daddy was having some fun. <laughs> it meant that God had me in mind. <laughs> Talk to me somebody. <laughs> But then before you leave Ephesians, he said, Ephesians chapter 1, he said, not only have you been chosen, he said, you've also been adopted. 
Now, adoption worked parallel to regeneration. And regeneration, I have my father's nature. But when I'm adopted, I have his name. <laughs> Here's the difference. You see, a man can meet a woman, marry her, and have a child prior to marriage. The boy looked just like him. He acts just like him. He have his father's nature. He just don't have his daddy's name. Once you marry this new sister and have some more children by her, she get upset because she don't want him to have nothing to do with this outside boy because he's connected to his mama. And so she don't want to deal with mama drama. And this man can be a billionaire and die and the boy will never get a quarter. But if he turn around and adopt his son and give him his name, I don't care how the rest of the family try to fight to keep him from getting anything, part of the inheritance is his. Well, God did that to us. When we were born again, he gave us his nature. But then he turned right around and gave us his name. So now I can say I am an heir of God. And I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a chosen generation. I am a peculiar people. But he's still in Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 13. He said, we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Here's what this seal means. Seal means that once I'm in Christ, I can never get out of Christ. Now, I know I hear some people say, I used to be saved, but I'm not saved anymore. No, you used to go to church. You see, just going to church doesn't any more save you than hanging around a garage would make you a Rolls Royce. You must be born again. You see, any faith that fizzled before the finish had a flaw from the first. Which means if you're not saved now, you never was saved. Talk to me, somebody. Because God don't play that. He don't save you and then lose you. He says in John 10, 11, he said, I'm the good shepherd. He says in John 10, 9, I am the door. He says in John 10, 7, I'm the door of the sheepfold. I said, now Jesus, make up your mind. Are you the good shepherd? Are you the door? Are you the door of the sheepfold? He said, I'm all three. <laughs> he says, the good shepherd, I round up my sheep. I bring them in through the door into the sheepfold. Once I get them into the sheepfold, I come back and lay down at the door, and I become the door. I said, what do you do that for? He said, because can't nobody come in without coming in by me. And can nobody come out without coming out by me. Talk to me, somebody. You see, what messes us up is that we're trying to stay safe and keep ourselves. But Jude 24 said, now under him that is able to keep us i'm not keeping me he's keeping am i here by myself and so ephesians chapter one deal with the privilege of the believer ephesians chapter two deal with the pardon of the believer ephesians chapter three deal with the power of the believer ephesians chapter four deal with the practice of the believer ephesians chapter five deal with the purity of the believer Ephesians chapter 6 deal with the persistence of the believer. He says, finally. Then he said, my brethren. Greek word for brethren is the word artifacts. It means from the same womb. As quiet as it is kept, there are only five different births in the Bible. Uh, they're characterized like this. The soil birth, surgical birth, sack birth, Savior's birth, and saint's birth. Genesis 2, 74, man from the dust of the ground, that's the soil birth. After God made man, he put him to sleep, performed surgery, took a reel from him and made woman, that's surgical birth. After Adam knew Eve, impregnated her, she brought forth Cain, Abel, and Seth, she carried them in a sack. Every woman that after, when you get pregnant, you carry a baby in a sack, that's sack birth. The Holy Spirit leaps upon Mary and pregnant her should bring forth the Savior of the world. That's the Savior's birth. The Holy Spirit brought us from darkness to the marvelous light, give us new inspiration, new aspiration, start looking with new observations, counted with a new calculation. That's the saint's birth. And when we're born again, we are connected from the spiritual womb. 
That means you may have never seen me before, but I'm your brother. <laughs> you my brothers and my sisters, we're in the same family. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong. The word be strong, it, the Greek is endudomai, it's a compound word. Anytime you see en in the original language, it means good or well off. In other words, what this verse is saying, God wants to live on the inside of us. In other words, he really wants to live underneath my skin. That's why he tell you what to do with every member of your body. With Psalms 121 verse 1, I lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which come at my help. My help comes from the Lord. When my ears I take Matthew 11 and 15, he that have ears to hear, let him. With my mind I take Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. With my heart and mouth I take Romans 10 and 10, for with the heart man believeth on the righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When my hand I take Ecclesiastic 9 and 10, whatsoever thou hand find to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor wisdom, nor knowledge in the grave where thou goest. When my knees I take Philippians 2 and 10, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. When my feet I take Hebrew 12 and 1, laying aside every weight and sin, which do it so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. With the rest of my body, take Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Talk to me, somebody. He wants to live on the inside. Let me say inside. He said, be strong. We go for strong is dunama. Dunama in the great Greek. But now, even though it's dunama, it's in plural form. Meaning this, that he's not just suggesting that the preacher be strong. Or the deacons be strong. He's suggesting that all of us be strong. <laughs> Talk to me somebody. This is not a day to be weak. We must be strong. Shout strong one time. It's in plural form, but it's in present tense, which means it's not just a one-time strength. Anybody can be strong on Sunday. <laughs> he wants you to be strong on Monday. <laughs> he wants you to be strong on Saturday. It is continuing in action. I must stay strong, but it's in the imperative mood, which means it's not just a suggestion, it's not just a recommendation. He's commanding us to be strong. And there's some, he's telling me to be strong. Uh, but it's in the passive voice. Here's what that means. Passive voice means the subject is being acted upon. Now, here's what it also means. That he's telling me to do something I can't do. You say, that's not fair. Will God tell you to do something you can't do? Yes. We say all the time in the Baptist church, God won't put no more on you. You've heard it, haven't you? Then what you can bear, but he will. He'll put more on you than what you can bear, so he'll show you he'll bear it for you. Romans, Romans 8, 28 said, and we know. Romans 8, 26 said, and we know not. I know Paul, make up your mind. Do we know or do we don't know? He said, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 26 said, we know not what we ought to pray for as we ought, but the spirit happens. The word happens. Is only mentioned twice in the New Testament. Soon unto slum bottom aisle. Triumph compound where it sound like it's big till you cut it up. The word soon means united. It means this that when you're born again, you are united with the Godheads. You see, y'all don't have it. You see, creation is God behind us. Bethlehem is God with us. Calvary is God for us. Pentecost is God in us. He was donated at Bethlehem.
demonstrated at Calvary, but illustrated at Pentecost. Here's what that means, that when you see a child of God, he ain't by himself. He got somebody with him. He got round the clock protection. <laughs> Y'all don't like me. <laughs> now the second word, second part of the word, antis mean over a guess. Here's what that mean. It mean kind of like when I'm in the gym working out. I've got a, a woman trainer that trained with me. She's a woman preacher, a little bitty lady, but she know how to train. She know what to do to get the best out of me. And she woke up and said, all right, Rev, we're going to do some bitch pressing. I said, all right. Come on, give me 10 reps. And then she said, rest a minute. She don't mean several. She mean one minute. I rest one minute. She said, all right. Give me 10 more. She said, all right. Let's rest two minutes. Then she said, give me 10 more. Now she put 10 more pounds on each side. I get to about seven reps. My arms start trembling. She look at me and say, don't quit on me now. I get one more. She said, all right, I'm going to spot you. Let me, while I'm under the low, <laughs> she's above the low. While I'm pushing, she's pulling. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. And when I get through, she tapped me on the shoulder. Say, I told you, you could do it. Well, God spot us. He put loads on us. That's too heavy for us to handle. But he turned around and said, I'm going to spot you. Y'all yeah. don't hear me in this house. <laughs> and when we can't handle it, he take the load. Yeah. Do I have yeah. a witness? Yeah. I said, now, yeah. Paul, why do I need to be strong? Yeah. He said, read verse 11, put on. Yeah. The, the word put on is the Greek word endure it's the same word you see in Luke 24 49 wait until you are endured the word endured mean this is like you see women with these little tights on they they have to push themselves to get them on you see every twist every turn Anybody sometimes is so tight you can see the blood running warm in their veins. Well, this is exactly what this word means. It means to squeeze into. It literally means to be covered with the Holy Spirit. That he cover every part of your body. <laughs> Y'all know him. He said, listen, you can't go out fighting the devil naked. You got to be covered, put on. Then it said the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand. The word stand is his to me. Help me say his to me. His to me means to stand erect without bent shoulders, without a bent back. Stand. The Lord wants you to stand. I said, Paul, tell me why. He said, if you read Ephesians 4, you will discover the church got some problems. That's what you mean. He said, four, Ephesians 4, 25, said they're doing entirely too much lying. But he said, not only they lying in Ephesians 4, 25. He said, in Ephesians 4, 26, they're getting mad and stand angry too long. He said, they're lying in 25. Getting mad in verse 26. He said in Ephesians 4 27, they're giving place to the devil. He said they're lying in 25. <laughs> Getting angry in 26. Giving place to the devil in 27. He said they've started stealing in Ephesians 4 28. He said they're lying in 25. Getting angry in 26. Giving place to the devil in 27. Still in and 28. So they're going to cursing in verse 29. He 
said they're lying in 25, getting angry in 26, giving place to the devil in 27, stealing in 28, cursing in 29, said they're grieving the spirit in verse 30. <laughs> he said they're lying in 25. Preach from Ray. They're getting angry in 26. Giving pleas to the devil in 27, stealing in 28, cursing in 29, grieving the spirit in 30, so they done got bitter in verse 31. <laughs> Am I in this house by myself? He said, listen, he said, watch this. He said, he said, put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to stand against, against, against the weak word. Against is the word Pros, P R O S. It's an intimate word. It means face to face. You see the same word in John 1 and 1 in the beginning. What's the word? The word was with. Same Greek word, pros, means face to face. It means in John 1 and 1 that God the Father, God the Son, they were always face to face. There was only one time they were not face to face, and that was when Jesus was at Calvary. And the reason it was not at face to face did because my seeing got in the way. Have I got a witness? The word process also part of the word for the word prayer. Greek word for prayer is pros UK. Same word, pros, pros mean intimate, mean face to face. UK mean wish or desire. So whenever I pray, I come face to face with God, giving him my wish or my desire. Now, what I need to become face to face with God, because what Ephesians 6 and 11 say, I'm getting ready to become face to face with my enemy. But if I have already been face to face with my God, whenever my enemy show up, my enemy can't help me. <laughs> I wish I had some help in this house. Don't run into your enemy before you run into God. Put on the whole armor. God, that you might be able to stand against the wiles. Greek word methodia is where we get our English word method. Meaning that Satan come with his methods. In other words, when a devil come to attack you, he come organized. Yeah, he come, help me say organized. And the devil knows scripture. Matter of fact, he used the same scripture for his mission statement that Jesus uses for his mission statement. John 10 and 10, the thief coming, not for but to steal, kill, and destroy. The Lord take the same verse for his mission statement. I come that you might have life, <laughs> that you might have it more. Am I doing all right in here? abundantly he take the same the word methodia mean with a road with a road what does that mean with the road well satan is on the road the lord ran into him one day said where you coming from he said to and fro <laughs> seeking whom i can devour i just told you that ephesians 4 27 said don't give him a place here's what the devil do he find a church member that's disgruntled. He find one that's always grumbling and complaining. You giving place to the devil. <laughs> I wish I had some heaven here. You find a person that won't forgive nobody. That keep holding grudges Talk to me, somebody. You see, forgiveness is not for the person that wronged you. Forgiveness is for you. Because as long as you don't forgive them, they have power over you. They keep you up at night. They have you where you can't eat a bite. I wish I had some help in here. So it's up to you to release it by forgiving them. I have to do folk that way that owe me money. So I won't be mad. I'll just forgive them. Just go on. Me. Talk to me somebody. Because when somebody owe you, when you see them, that's the first thing you think about. 
That Negro owe me some money. You ain't studying about what they got on, what they're driving, what kind of house they live in. All you see is they ain't paying me. I got to get out of here. I got to. I got to leave. I. I'm holding y'all too long. Second Corinthians two eleven said, "Be not ignorant of Satan's device." The word device is the Greek word noema. The root word of noema is noeo. The root word for noeo is noose, which means mine. In other words, the devil is after your mind. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Second Corinthians 10 and 4, he said, I reckon that the presence of this warfare, they're not carnal. But mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. The word strongholds of Kuimai, I'm, I'm going to leave y'all alone with this original language. A Kuimai, when it was first brought up, it meant fortress. It came from huge castles that they would build with tall walls to keep the enemy from getting in. Whenever they stayed in a fortress, they didn't worry about the enemies, they couldn't get in. But by the time the New Testament was written, the word akurimai, it meant prison. Now prison is just opposite of a fortress. A prison is designed to keep the ones in from getting out. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me this out. <laughs> in other words, whatever is in there, the devil try to keep it from coming out. Because if God has deposited something in your life, the devil don't want it to get out. And if you ever notice, whenever uh, an attack come upon you from the devil, it's because he have discovered something you don't know. That God is getting ready to explode your life with something spectacular. You see, if you watch the Bible, whenever God rises to bless somebody, Satan would always rise to bless them. Y'all don't hear that. When y'all look at me that way, it take me 10 more minutes to explain. You remember when Jesus went into Jordan and he was baptized? Can I tell you what happened? When he went in the water, that was the dip. And after the dip, then that was a dove that descended down. And then that was a dialogue. Because God said, this is my beloved son. And then that was the devil. Y'all don't like me this house. Whenever God get ready to bless you, expect Satan to show up to bless you. But he loved, and I'm through. He loved to play mind games. You see, watch this. Your noose is here. But your heart, cordia, is here whenever the Bible talk about the heart he's not talking about the pump in your chest let me read the scripture as a man think it in his heart so is he <laughs> y'all don't hear me that's why when the devil gets you he attack you in the mind because whenever stuff get in your mind it causes you to worry and the word worry, the German word, means to be choked. In other words, he choke you to suffocation. And whenever he start choking you and you start worrying, it creates stress. And what stress will do, stress number one, it causes your arteries to contract. And when your arteries do that, it causes blood to flow fast through your system. When blood flow fast, it causes you to have heart attacks and strokes. Talk to me, somebody. Stress will cause your, y'all ain't going to hit me here. It will cause your cholesterol to rise. And when your cholesterol rises, it causes your diabetes 2 to show up. When diabetes 2 show up, it causes you to have diseases. And when you have disease, it will cause you to have disease. And whenever you have disease, I, I guess I'm preaching by myself. When it causes you to have disease, you start wearing all over again. And because the devil is playing mind games with you. 
Do you know that the devil can take you out with just using your mind? You go to the doctor, the doctor said you got six months to live. Number one, ain't no doctor that smart. They don't know how long because life is in the hands of the Lord. But you said, but preacher, doctor told my mama she had six months to live. Five months she was gone. What you got to say about that? Here's what it is. You can live weeks without food, days without water, but only minutes without hope. That when your hope is gone, you're getting ready to check out of here. <laughs> That's why my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness to have a witness. Let me go on. I've held you long enough. Now, Jude 24 said, now. Normally, now is an adverb. But in Jude 24, instead of being an adverb, it's a conjunction. Because it is connecting what happened in Jude 23. It's a now unto. Unto is a preposition, which is a preposition. Preposition means that where I am now is not where I'm going to end up. In other words, it's a comma instead of a period. You see, people say, this is a period in my life. No, ain't no period. It's a comma. A period means stop. Comma means pause. Then they said, now unto him. Shout him one time. Now him is a pronoun, but it is an objective pronoun. The next word is that, which is a pronoun, but it's a subjective pronoun. Normally in the English language, you never find an objective and subjective together. It's either of, never, both in. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. But since the Holy Spirit can do what he wants to do, he put an objective and subjective together. That's in the King James Version. But uh, I, I wasn't satisfied with King James. I pulled up my Greek text to see what it was saying in the Greek language. All this stuff wasn't even in there. In the Greek text, it read like this, him able. That's all I got for you. Him able. Have I got a witness here? You see, we ever discover it's about him. I'm through with you. Shake somebody's head. So neighbor, it's not about you. <laughs> and it sure ain't uh, about me. <laughs> but it is uh, about him. Have I got a witness here? In Mark chapter 4, verse 35, it said the same day when the evening was come, uh, they said unto him, let us pass over unto the other side. Verse 36, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and that was with him, other little ship. And verse 37, there rose a great storm of wind that beat into the ship, so was now full. He was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillar. And they awakened him and said unto him, Carest thou not uh, that we perish? John 1 and 3. All things uh, was made by him. And without him uh, was not anything made uh, that was made. John 1 and 4. In him uh, was life. And life was the light of men. John 3, 16. Uh, said for God's soul of the world. Uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life Acts 1 10 11 and 12 why stand ye here gazing into heaven the same way you see him go the same way is coming back Acts 17 28 in him we live in him we move and in him uh, we have our being Romans 
Romans 10, 13, uh, Romans 10, 9, uh, that if thou shalt confess uh, with the mouth the Lord Jesus, uh, shall believe in thine heart uh, that God raised him uh, from the dead, uh, thou shalt be saved. Uh, Romans 11, 36, uh, it said, for by him, to him, uh, to him, uh, all things exist. Uh, Ephesians 3 and 20. Uh, now unto him uh, that's able uh, to do exceedingly uh, abundantly uh, above all you can ask uh, or think. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, Revelation 1 17. Uh, and when I uh, saw him, uh, I fell in his feet uh, as a dead man. Uh, have I got a witness him? Uh, thank y'all for letting me stop by. But shake a hand one more time. Uh, say, neighbor, uh, don't forget this today. Uh, it's not about me. Uh, it ain't about you. Uh, but it is uh, about him. Uh, whatever we discover, uh, it's about him. Uh, Worship service changes. What is about him? Your giving change. What is about him? Your prayer life change. Your preaching change. Uh, can I holler one time for me? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it is. Uh, it about him. Uh, thank God. Uh, him uh, everything uh, he been too good to me uh, done too much for me uh, brought me from too far for me to deny him uh, y'all know him don't you he's better than good sweeter than honey mightier than a mountain wider than a round straighter than a cross he's purer than air clearer than a crystal tapes can't measure him water can't drown him fire can't burn him death can't kill him the grave can't hold him don't have a witness uh, he's too good uh, to be mean uh, he's too loving uh, not to care he's too omnipresent uh, to be absent uh, too omnipotent uh, to be weak uh, too omniscient uh, to be dumb uh, he's too holy uh, to be defiled uh, 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 yes sir Ah, yes, sir. It is about him. Yep, it's a him one more time. Is it all right? Tell somebody, sir, I'm standing here today. Not because of what I've done, but what he has done for me. Somebody ought to be able to say, if you only knew my story, <laughs> you wouldn't get upset <laughs> with me in my glory. <laughs> Somebody else can say, neighbor, <laughs> I've had some rough times <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Tell them it haven't been easy. <laughs> if it wasn't one thing, <laughs> it was something else. <laughs> but sir, I know you didn't know about it. <laughs> I haven't told you. So the reader didn't tell you. And because you wouldn't believe it. If I told you. Tell them the reason you wouldn't believe it. It's because I don't look like. What I've been through. But of all the hell. That I've been through. I still. Have my joy. And this joy. That I. The world didn't give it to me. The world, oh, the world, can't take it away. Ooh. 
Hallelujah. 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 Is it all right? Pepe says, all right. I'm glad I know him. I got to get out of here. I'm glad I know him. I'm glad I'm saved. Uh, that was an old Indian out in the middle of the street shouting and praising the Lord. Didn't look like it had nothing. So white man walked up and said, Mr. Indian, I've been watching you for the last 30 minutes shouting and praising Jesus. He said, what did Jesus do for you? Oh, Indian got him a stick and dug a trench in the middle of the road. Got him some flammable liquids. Pulled in the trench. Saw the worm on a limb and got the worm and put in the liquids. Got him a match and struck it on this end. Fire was coming toward the worm this way. Struck another match on this end. Fire was coming to the worm this way. And right before the fire got to the worm, <laughs> worm couldn't back up. He couldn't go forward. Oh, Indian stooped down and picked up the little worm in his hand. Said, this is what me Jesus did for me. <laughs> when I was him in, I couldn't back up. I couldn't go forward. <laughs> Just in the nick of time he saved me <laughs> I'm out of here now anybody know he saved you just in the nick of time didn't he do it <laughs> didn't he do it hallelujah hallelujah Mm. Hallelujah. Have you any river you think is uncrossable? Have you any mountains? That you cannot travel through. God specializes in things that are impossible. I'm through. He'll do. When all the power, Holy Ghost power, can do, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the message. We thank you for your presence. Touch in this house. If there are one or some that have come here. This out of church or straight away, maybe never accepted you as Lord and Savior. Would you give them courage and boldness to surrender to you even now? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.